Hello, today I will explain the web client interface of the OpenVox XT200 IPBX. After simply entering the IP address, you can easily access the interface. The default password is admin admin. When accessed, there will be a button here to enable and disable auto refresh. Here we have sections and subsections for configuration. And here we find the different information and available configurations in each section. So as you can see, there is the status section that gives us an overview of the state of our DPBX. There is a section with different subsections in the network part, on the extension and department management side, a section for the available trunks and FXO, the call control part where calls can be managed and rules can be created, call feature. This part is very interesting and for that I will make an ID video to explain it well. It mainly demonstrates the ability of this equipment to manage and facilitate internal communication within the company. Advanced features, where we have some slightly advanced configurations, will also be explained including configurations related to the system, available services, reboot, and logout. So we start with the status section, where we have overview, and here we find information about the system, such as the model, the number of available FXO ports, which we see here in the model name. There are 40, so 40 indicates that it also accepts. The maximum number of SIP extensions, the maximum number of SIP trunks, and usual information like the firmware version. We also have a general view of the memory in real time, there is also a view of the section where the available network interfaces are located. We can even access and configure them. In the PBX monitor section, we find three panels. In the status section, we find interesting statistics about our PBX. For example, there is information on the number of registered site expansions, configured clients, the number of registered ranked sites, and the number of connected and disconnected FXOs. And so indeed, after that we have in the live calls panel, we have information about live calls, including interesting details such as the plan, source, destination, call duration, and also the recording. Concurrency panel gives us an overview of the real-time call concurrency status. Least time graphs also has three dials. The load section gives us an overview of CPU consumption. Traffic shows us an overview of the network, and conditions allows us to see a general overview of the different conditions and the information used. In the network section, we find the interface where we can manage the various different interfaces of our IPv6 and more. For example, here we have the interface for line 1, 2 and 1. We can even configure the address that comes by default with the hardware. We can change the protocol, etc. Advanced configurations can even be made. In the DHCP and Jean DNS section, it allows for the configuration of DHCP and DNS servers. In the hostname and root subsections, configure routing rules to Let's go, it's a bit advanced. And in the diagnostic subsection, we can perform diagnostics using the tools ping, tracer root, and NSDO. In the extension section, we can configure the various extensions and settings for our PBX. They can be added manually, added in bulk, edited, selected by IDP, and all extensions can be imported and exported. Here we have a department, so we can create departments and add numbers or extensions to them. This way, we can effectively and efficiently segment our business in a more detailed, comprehensive and thorough manner. In the trunk section, we find the available FXO options that are just as we found in the overview section. Here we clearly and obviously find the four FXO supported by the hardware. They can be configured and data can be imported and exported. In the Shira SIP trunk subsection, SIP trunks can be configured by adding them and even setting up the different available configurations. There are many, for example here, as you can see, we can add passwords, etc. Configure the protocols. We have advanced settings, codec settings. In the trunk group subsection, we can add additional SIP trunk groups. In the call control section, we find the inbound routers and outbound router sections, such as this is where we can define the rules for the extensions. For example, inbound routers, we can configure the rules for incoming calls. So, you see, we can specify the priority, we can choose the time profile, an extension that we can configure from this section. The time profile means that we can set schedules for, for example, business hours that we will see later. We can also specify the source. Thank you. 
and the destination, uh, so that's how it is. We also have other advanced settings. For the autoclip routers, it allows configuring the phone system to keep logs of calls in case there is a missed call. This way, the system will be prepared for the next time. It will directly route the call to the extension desired by the customer because it will simply see the last missed call and its specific extension number in order to connect the call. So here, it keeps the details for that reason, ensuring that all necessary information is preserved. In the time profiles section, we can create schedules with periods and dates. And we can also specify the days of the week, so we can use that in the rules for outgoing calls, making it highly customizable and flexible. And we have the two remaining sections, blacklist and whitelist, where we can blacklist calls. What is good here is that we can indeed even specify the direction, that is to say inbound or outbound or both. Regarding the two sections, call features and advanced features, I will dedicate the next video to discuss them in detail. I will briefly move directly to system. In the system section, there are various system settings which you can configure to suit your needs and preferences for optimal performance and user experience. In the first subsection, there is a general setting where, for example, we can configure the time zone of our area. This setting allows us to ensure that all time-related functions and features are accurate and synchronized with our local time. One can easily manage or customize the log journal and efficiently change the language in the administration section. The system password can be changed. By default, it comes with admin, but this can be changed for security reasons. In the security section, there are several options and advanced configurations. In terms of security, for example, in the firewall section, one can configure the different rules to be applied. It can be added easily and conveniently from this add button that we can edit and modify settings. There are other settings available, for example, we can block IPs and we can also block MAC addresses using ACL lists, which are very useful. Remote management, as its name suggests, means that if it is enabled, we can access our PBX remotely. The hot standby, which is a very effective option for increasing system availability by adding another system that will act as a support or secondary backup system if our system experiences a failure. The license section, of course, allows us to update the license of our system when we can obtain information about our current system, which supports a maximum of 200 extensions, 30 subscriptions, and 24 concurrent calls. We say to ourselves, you can also access the different logs, how to export them, as you can see here, with the date, the type of log, etc. And finally, the backup and firmware flash section, which is very interesting, and from which we can download a backup version of our current system. You can also easily reset the system when you can safely recover or upload a backup file that you have previously downloaded and securely stored. And from this part, we can basically flash the firmware with a different version, essentially, in essence. In the services section, there is the end-to-end -end section, which is specifically a comprehensive application that ensures peer-to-peer -peer communication securely and reliably through a VPN. It is an open source application, and if we want to use it, its configuration is done here. OpenVPN is also a server that ensures better secure communication and very secure encryption of the data transmitted across the network. You can even access OLOC from OpenVPN. The MQTT broker section has been reactivated, so we can speed up communication with applications that use the MQTT protocol and ensure high-quality real-time data communication. The reboot part remains. You can reboot the system and use the logout button to exit the system. We have the largest stock of VoIP with dozens of brands. Here, you will find what fits your budget and needs. And most importantly, everything comes with a warranty on the hardware and installation.